So something that really annoys me is when people on social media complain about the pricing of dev tools. Like for example, let's look at an expensive tool like ChatGPT Plus or IntelliJ IDEA or any other tool that costs 20 to $100 a month. So that might seem like a lot, but only if you think like a consumer. Like to me, I definitely wouldn't spend $600 on this. That's just too much for me personally. But if you think about your company and the salary they pay for you, like for example, let's look at the average salary of a US software engineer here. Okay, so let's assume you're earning on the lower end here. So about $65,000 a year. So let's say you're working full time that works out to about 180 hours per month. So that works out to about $30 that the company pays for every hour of your time. And you know, you can adjust that figure depending on what you earn exactly. Like, let's say you earn 75K, then it's this, 100K, then it's this. And you know, the real number is probably a bit higher still because the company also has to pay for the office and HR and other overheads. But let's just roll with the $30 an hour figure because I think that's a fair amount to say that most engineers in the US probably make at least. If you're not in the US or in a lower income country, then probably what I'm saying in this video doesn't really apply to you. But for the US, I think it's a fairly low number. So even an expensive tool like IntelliJ will pay for itself if it saves you at least two hours per month, or in other words, about six minutes a day on average. I think that's an incredibly low bar to pass for a dev tool. And I think most dev tools save you significantly more time than that, or they just make your life a lot easier. The same argument can be made about better hardware or even infrastructure costs like paying for AWS or Vercel instead of building that all from scratch. So if I'm ever arguing with a manager about the budget for a tool, I would just show them the math. Like I would estimate the amount of time this tool is gonna save me, then I would divide that in half because first of all, always under promise and over deliver. And second, there are also other costs to buying a tool like setup and onboarding and security and so on. So by dividing in half, we're factoring those in. And then I just compare the cost of my time to the actual cost of the tool. And, you know, if that math doesn't work out in my favor, I won't even suggest buying the tool. But in most cases, it's a no brainer. And I'm not saying that often there aren't great other free tools out there, just that the pricing shouldn't be the deciding factor in most cases. The problem is that not invented here syndrome is real and we as developers, myself included, easily fall into the trap of undervaluing our own time. I often see developers waste hours on problems that could just be solved by throwing a little money at them. I think part of that comes from a false sense of pride. You know, I can certainly remember times when I felt pretty smug about solving a problem problem with non-optimal tooling or hardware when really the smart play would have been to just invest in proper tools. I think especially more junior developers are often afraid to ask for pricey tools when in reality when I'm managing developers I'm often happy if they tell me about inefficiencies they've spotted and they bring concrete ideas to fix them. That said, sometimes there are other considerations why a manager won't approve a tool, like security concerns. Or sometimes you can have the budget for hiring a developer, but you're not allowed to spend it on other things, even if they're actually cheaper. So sometimes the way the process is set up in the company just doesn't allow for that level of efficiency, and this might not be in your manager's power to change. So no matter what the decision is, remember to keep calm and try to put yourself in the other person's shoes to better understand the position. At the end of the day though, I think it's really important to remember to not handicap ourselves and use our full potential with proper tools because our time as developers is valuable. I have some other more technical videos on my channel like this one here explaining the git pull rebase command with some fancy animations or this one showing the most useful git shortcuts that I use on a daily basis. This was a bit of a different video from my usual explainer style videos so please do let me know what you think in the comments. The next video is about why and how to rebase feature branches and how to resolve conflicts while rebasing. It already took me almost 30 hours to create so please consider subscribing to check it out once it's released next week. Have a great day and thanks for watching Philomatics.